did that one time. <laughs> Frank liked to fell all the way in that class. Do what? Your daddy liked to fell all the way in that room one time. Yeah, I told him. Blink, blink. Yeah, he's still gonna, you know, he's trying to fly out here. Alright, everybody. Let's rub the vocalizer. Let's sing a while. Yeah, she's still, she's still usher this Sunday. Jesus precious name, thank you for this blessed day, dear Lord Jesus, for each and every one. Dear Lord, pray for these new uh, ones that's taken office, dear Lord Jesus. Be with them, Lord Jesus, and help them do the job that needs to be done here, Lord Jesus. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for each and every one, all our church, and each and every one that makes it up, dear Lord Jesus. We thank you. Pray for those that are sick, Lord Jesus, in the hospitals, have cancer, or whatever, Lord Jesus. Heal, heal the bodies, Lord according to thy will, but most of all, heal the soul. Conviction be upon their souls once again, the side of heaven, lost people. Pray for the rest of this service, dear Lord Jesus, we be glorified in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. When the trumpet of the Lord shall sound the time shall be no
We have any songs? Well, I hope you want to sing?
Benton Real blessing. Praise God, amen. And, uh, uh, I guess most of you know there's a, a place down in Chesney called uh, Recovery Addiction and Recovery or something. But uh, anyhow, uh, they, they must be all over the world. But uh, I met a friend the other day that she went through that program. And uh, she's down in Mississippi. And uh, she's turned her life completely around. She's living for the Lord now. And, and uh, mm -hmm. so, you know, uh, she touched me because of, it shows pictures of where she had been to where she's at now, uh, testifying and, and singing for the Lord and stuff. And what a blessing that was. Uh, I heard this song, and it just reached out and got me, you know. Uh, it says that after all this time, God's blood is still just as strong as it ever was. Amen. I, I thank the Lord for that. Two thousand years have come and gone, but his blood is just as strong. See heaven and what a uh, what a great time that's gonna be.
Anything else? Amber, you want to say? Jennifer, you said you you got asking Gary. You said you wasn't gonna sing for uh, Gary. She ain't sung for us in a while. I guess we're through playing then. I'm glad we got good music up here. Banjo, fiddle, What do you feel like, Richard? I'll tell you just a little bit. I don't know what time it is. Don't, don't want to take a lot of time. But well, it don't matter, does it? I appreciate the church for praying for me. Yes, sir. And I'm getting better. After losing all this blood, it's, it's getting built back up. And I'm doing better. <coughs> God gave me some scripture last week if I could take just a minute to read it. I'll take just a little. Yeah, come on up here. Read, read the scripture. I asked him this morning if he felt like it. Well, he's lost six units. Six units of blood. Well, that's a whole lot of blood. They ain't about eight in the whole body. That yeah, good. that's what they tell you. Uh, that's been what? A month ago, better? Yeah, it's a month ago. We, I started out at St. Luke's Hospital. They ended up in Charlotte Hospital. They sent me back to Iceville to the hospital at the VA in Iceville. They found a hole in my small intestine. It was leaking all the blood out and uh, got that fixed. I'm doing better. Praise the Lord. Get this I've got three things I've got to witness to today and witness for along with the church. Number one is Jesus. Amen. <laughs> Praise the Number Lord. Number two is my mama. Yeah. My, my mama was born on the 4th of July. I've been trying to find her eventually, and I've misplaced her somewhere. She's gone. And I had this, uh, an open heart surgery, December 22nd, 1994. Doctor told me, said, I'm going to take your heart out and left side of you and do five bypasses. Said, I don't, uh, I don't mind putting you on life support till, till we get the surgery done. He said, sometimes we lose them and they get them back. I finally, third time, I said, well, doctor, you told me that three times. I said, you get me to the river and I'll get across. <laughs> Amen. Go ahead and break it in. <laughs> and just a day or two later, a little girl in the church I pastor brought this and gave it to me. And uh, eighth, uh, uh, eighth verse and fifth chapter of Matthew said, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Amen. Chapter 5 and verse 8. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. And after when I pray, and I pray always, God give me a clean mind, a pure heart, and a free spirit. Praise the Lord. Now, Praise the Lord. we start with something a little funny. This is a big thing anyway. Brother Trent preached to us last Sunday of the book of Genesis, chapter 1. In the beginning, yep. God created the heavens and the earth, and he rested. Then he created the waters, and so, uh, then he rested. Then he created the firmaments, then he rested. Then he created the animals, the birds, and so on. Then he rested. Then he created man. Then he rested. Then he created woman. And since then, neither God nor man has rested. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. <laughs> Praise the Lord. We need to be lighthearted. Amen. In this world, we're saved. We're going somewhere. We're going fast. 
December 22nd, 1994, there's a lot of people standing around my bedside. My mother, my wife Betty, my three brothers, Pete, Chick, Peter, and Jack. They're all in heaven today. They're all gone. I'm the last one. We're talking about deacons. And we know what the deacon's job is. Only thing I ever knew about my daddy, he was a deacon all my life. And I was talking about a deacon sticking. He did the job. Amen. He made fifty dollars a week, had eight youngins, mom and daddy, and grandpa and granny. One little old little old house didn't didn't have no underpainting. Some of the windows had paint in them, some didn't. Feed the chickens through the floor. But he loved God. Amen. On Friday, he'd get his check down at the grocery store in town and he'd come home and uh, bring his groceries, 25 pound bag of flour, 25 pound bag of meal, uh, meal, meal whatever, or so forth and on. What little money he had left as a widow woman lived around the hill, had five boys and one girl. He told my mama, he said, Beck, I got to go back to town. I got a little money. She said, what for? He spent the rest of what money he had on that woman and five boys. Praise God. Amen. I heard her son testify to me many times. I stood behind my daddy's casket and tried to say a few words over him. Oh, Lord. It was a hard time. He was a well-known in the town. He was an alderman. And the mayor was there and all the aldermen to tell all the town officials was there at his funeral. This church was packed out and we went nearly a mile down the road, cars parked. And I said, well, I'm gonna be good at this. I'll not get, I'll not get too carried away. <laughs> Bad mistake. Amen. Somehow, Somehow God come on the scene. Praise God, amen. Next thing I knew, I was shouting and the whole church was shouting. The funeral lasted about four hours, I think. Let me read you this real quick that somebody gave me after I had my heart surgery. It says the heart. Before I boarded the surgeon began, I'll open up your heart. You'll find Jesus there, the boy interrupted. The surgeon looked up and lowered, I'll cut your heart open. He continued to see how much damage has been done. But when you open up my heart, you'll find Jesus there, said the boy. The surgeon looked to the parents, who said quietly, when I see how much damage has been done, I'll show your heart and chest back up and I'll plan what to do next. But you'll find Jesus in my heart. The Bible says he lives there. The hymns all say he lives there in your heart. Find him in your heart. The surgeon that had enough, I'll tell you what I'll find in your heart. I'll find damaged but low blood supply and a weakened vessel. And I'll find out if I can to make you well. You find Jesus there too, he lives. The surgeon left, the surgeon sat in his office recording his notes from the surgery. Damaged aorta, damaged pulmonary vein, widespread, widespread muscle degeneration, no hope for a transplant, no hope for cure. Careful therapy, painkillers and bed rest. On nurses here, he paused deaf within one ear. But he stopped the recorder. There was more to be said. Why? He asked aloud. Why did you do this? You put him here. You put him in this pain and you cursed him to an early death. Why? The Lord answered and said, The boy, my lamb, was not meant for you to flock alone, for he is part of my flock and he will forever be here in my flock. He'll feel no pain and be comforted as can I imagine. His parents one day would join him, and they were no peace. My flock will continue to grow. The surgeon's tears were hot, but they were hotter. 
He created that boy and you created his heart. He'll be dead within months. The Lord answered the boy, my lamb shall return to my flock. For for he has done his duty. I did not put my lamb with this flock to lose him, but to retrieve him another lost lamb. The surgeon wept. The surgeon sat beside the boy's dead bed. The parents sat across from him. The boy awoke and whispered. Did you cut open my heart? Yes, said the surgeon. What did you find? asked the boy. I found Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. In the heart. I found Jesus in your heart. Praise God. Thank God for a church this morning that Jesus is in. Amen. To be able to sit together in heavenly places. It's been a wonderful day so far. We made it through without fight. <laughs> I saw the David go get a preacher at one church and they choked him down and drug him out of the church. I thought that's a bad thing to do in business speak. Amen. And they'll give an account of that, and we'll all give an account of what we've done and what we're going to do. Let's pray. Yes, Lord. Lord, we come in your presence, God, to thank you for this day. Thank you, Lord, for what's been done and what's going to be done. Thank you for a clean heart. Clean mind and a clean heart, a pure heart. Father, I pray this morning, God, that you'll bless this church the very depths of our soul. Bless this country, Lord, we pray. Lord, as we celebrate the 4th of July, God, that we might lift you up above all things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. We'll take just a few minutes, baby. Chapter 5 in the book of St. Matthew. Chapter 5, St. Matthew. And Jesus said, The multitude went to a high mountain, and we said his disciples came unto him. Somebody told me one time, said, Well, you can't. A lot of people won't come and have nothing to do with it if you preach Jesus. Well, how come Jesus had a multitude everywhere he went? Amen. That's right. Yep. Everywhere he went, there's a multitude of people following him, going along with him. So I'm glad to believe if you lift Jesus up and get him high and exalted above everything in this world, I believe that God's going to reward us for that. Don't you, Brother Trent? Amen. That's what he said. Bobby lift it up. I was down in Chesney, South Carolina Amen. yesterday, and there's a black boy down there that's got a little rummage house or whatever you call it there on the street going into Chesney. And I stopped in there yesterday, and first thing he mentioned was the Lord and going to church. <laughs> it didn't take just a few minutes to wish having revival right there. Amen, the praise the Lord. God's everywhere. Amen. God's everywhere. I know it's the 4th of July. We're supposed to be representing our flag and our Christian flag and all this. I know that we're celebrating a lot of things. Brother, the most important thing to me in my life, one of the most important things to me is my mama. She raised me and went, took me to church. And I love my mama and my daddy. I tried to every morning before I went in the army. I tried to go by their house and speak to them and just spend a little time with them. He opened his mouth and told them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Amen. Lord God. Most of us stay poor in the spirit the biggest part of the time. Why do we do that? I don't know. Ourselves? Yeah. Amen. Poor spirit, you can't feel the spirit of God watching the old ranger on TV. <laughs> Amen. You can't feel the spirit of God on Facebook. No, sir. <laughs> oh, but you got Amen. Go ahead. Our ground now. Well, I ain't got Facebook. I ain't even got a computer. I don't know how to turn that thing on. No, to, no <coughs> need to. But it can be used for the right thing. Amen. It can be used for the right thing. It, can, it is used for the right thing. A whole lot of cases. A lot of cases is not used for the right thing. That's right, amen. So we're poor in the spirit because for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessing are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Every time that we go to a funeral <coughs> and the 
200 some odd funerals I've officiated in in the last 50 some odd years and that's a mournful time. That's a time when people are sorrowful and when people are crying and people feel bad because it's morning time. And I imagine, I imagine how, how Mary and Martha felt when they and their brother had died. Hey man, I had a brother nine months younger than me and we call his name James and we called him Peter. His mom and daddy said they put him in a shoebox when he was born because he's just a, a, a nine months younger than me and and, uh, and he lived until uh, you know, 1956 and they wanted to do a heart transplant on him and, and I tell you, I said, Peter, what are you going to do about that? He said, no. He said, I'm not going to have a heart transplant until we're going to give me a deer in just a few days. And, and brother, where well, are brother going? He was born in town, brother, for me, when they told me that. And I said, son, you ought to do all you can, you can to stay alive. And he said, I'm doing all that God told me to do. He said, I'm just about ready to take my flight and, and get out of here. He drove a car Lord, right up uh, the East Coast. And I, I thought, well, he's a Presbyterian now. Huh? And I said, to say, see, beside him, he's moving there. Huh? A dog box between us. And I thought, well, huh? I'll just find out what kind of a man he is. Huh? I said, Peanut, huh? are you ready to go? And he said, well, huh? he said, I, huh? I just well, didn't mention nothing. Huh? Had an eight track player there up overhead, and he just reached up and pushed that track for that eight track player in. Huh? And the Jimmy Daddy's come over there saying, Supper time, come on. Well, God. Hey, man, go ahead. Down right there, and everything was fixed. Hey, man, go ahead. For him to go, brother, I want you to know. Huh? Hey, man. We're not here to stay, but we're leaving in just a few days. Huh? Lord, it God. Be long. Thank God I'm looking for the cross in. Huh? Hey, oh, man. Get out of here. Right. Amen. Hey, man. Blessed are they, Lord, the for well, they'll be comforted. Blessed are the meat, for they shall have heard their. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. You don't have to fight with guns and knives and weapons and all this. I know people talk about David and all this sin he made, committed with Bathsheba. I wonder how many times they think about how times that David saved Israel. Amen. That's right. Amen. The first time we ever record that, when he's a little old boy and he's up there in his hill country, I watch it over his brother. Huh? And God told him, said, well now, huh? Uh, they're in a fight down there and they're in a battle down the Philistines are fighting. Uh, and they're in a battle so you go down there uh, and take yeah, them with those victuals, take them something to eat. Uh, hey man, they got down there and that old giant over there bleeding. Uh, uh, the giants are cry, crying today and hollering out to us. He's going to win. He's going to beat us. No, no. Uh, uh, thank God he's not going to beat me. But I'm going to a place uh, uh, where there'll be no beatings. Like the hey Lord. man, praise God. I feel like preaching just a minute. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> well, preacher, you retired. Oh, I'm just retarded. <laughs> My oh, wife man. tells me I'm crazy. She told me last night, she said, no, you ain't crazy. I said, you passed that a long time ago. You passed crazy. I'm going to enjoy it for the time I've got left here. The devil never well, told me, brother, I ain't going to give him no saddle to ride on. Hey, he ain't going to get on my back, but he'll get off, brother, when I get to where I can pray and, and call on God, he'll get off. I was hey. on the lawnmower yesterday and had a flat toe to brother, and I got down there and had to get down on one knee. Hey, man, to work on that tar. And God said, why don't you just pray while you're down here? <laughs> Whoa! Hey, why don't you just pray, brother, while we're down here? And the shape we're in. Well, I feel good now. <laughs> Glory to God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Blessed are the meek that have heard the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, yeah. and they shall be filled. I come to church this morning hungry, wanting to feel Praise hungry. Praise God. Did you? Yeah. Hey, I come hungry, wanting to feel something. A preacher at the business meeting, he ought to be in the business meeting. Amen. He was. Yeah, he, was. he ought to be in the singing, and he was. Yeah, he was. Amen. He ought to be in the preaching, and I hope and pray to God. Yeah, he, he is. is. Amen. Amen. As long as he's where we are, and we're where he is, it's what's going to make the difference, brother. Yeah, yeah. Glory to God. Somebody said, you got any education? Nope. I don't have much education. But I do have a good DD. Where'd you get that? What college you get that at, preacher? Over in that law, they can't hold Ramsey Hill, Marshall. 
That's where I got my day day. Hey, the world is a day day. I'm a devil disturber. <laughs> That's what I do. Hallelujah, amen. Let him know that things is going to be better for the children. Of God. Right. That's right. Amen. All of us that's ready to meet the Lord ought to be a look up. Say, come quickly. Amen. Come to Lord Jesus. Come quickly. I've got more on the other side than I've got on this side. Amen. I'm preaching now. Thank God. Glory to God, that's right. God's got it all in his plan. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Amen. Brother Travis inspired me, blessed me to death just a few minutes ago talking about somebody I've never seen, probably never will, don't know nothing about. That girl that God changed her life around and got saved, and we all died down her somewhere. Yeah. God's a moving everywhere. <laughs> Hallelujah. He's moving all over our land. If we just get his name out, and that people know yeah, that he's so gone above all. I'm on. He's on my side. They called me for a period of one time in the job of Wendy's church. And I said, whoa. Yeah. People come in from New York. Everywhere the man that died was from, was from England. <laughs> well, I guess I was down talking to this brother Tennant in here. Yeah. He told me, he said, next time I come to this earth, said, I'm going to be a butterfly. <laughs> Mr. Drysdale, his her sister's called me and got, got in touch with me and let me do the funeral of Mr. Drysdale. We'd be cremated. He told me, he said, I'm going to be a butterfly next time I come to this earth. And I said, well, all right. <coughs> so I went up there to that Kingdom Hall that Joe went. He said, I tried to do his funeral and all them elders spoke and all them others spoke. And they talked about all this stuff. And they going to do what they going to, what's going to go on when they all got in this new world they're living in. Well, a few days later, I said, well, the church I was pastoring, I got to make me a little testimony. I said, well, folks, I'm going to tell you, I made it through that Jehovah's Witness year, and I said, there wasn't much to that. <laughs> I said, that man said he's going to be a butterfly, <laughs> Mr. Dan Drysdale. And I said, I was down on the first broad river of fishing, the prettiest butterfly I've ever seen in the world. Flew by me and he didn't even say hello, bud. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> hey, go ahead. Well, I know that's a lie. <laughs> hey, Amen. Amen. Well, preacher, is that the kind of shape you get in? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir. I've buried everything from human beings to a dog. Amen. Uh, get in there. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Glory to God. Just Amen. keep peace in the place going on. Amen. Got out of the church one time. Warhouse come up and down in Marshall, right down on Main Street. How uh, uh, Keith's, Keith's meal had that, uh, first, had that uh, fertilized place in there. God said, now, bud, you go down there and you open the church up on Main Street in Marshall. <laughs> I said, oh, well, I can't do that. God said, you can. Old drunk sitting down there on the bench, he fella come by and he said, hey, Mr. Tipton said, uh, you know where to find the church of God at in this place? He said, well, Presbyterian's the first church up there. Right down the street, the first Baptist is down there. You know, down the street, the Methodist. At the other street, head of the street down there at the Freeville Baptist, said, if there's our church of God in this town, I don't know where it is. <laughs> That's about the attitude most people's got. Yeah. God told me, he said, you open a church, you start a church. I said, well, Lord, I don't know what to do. The ladies needs to know that building. My lawyer said, what kind? said, I'll write to him and I'll find out if we can buy the building anyhow the store goes on. He got a hold of them and he said, you need uh, trustees to sign this, sign this, that you go pay for this old warehouse building. Yeah. I said, yep. I called my daddy and I said, daddy, I've been to your grandpa to go to Washington. We're going to get Tom Zams, George Robson, and I believe that's all we got. I said, we're going to go down there and we're going to sign the Sign up to get that building. What they didn't know was I was putting a trick on them. 
They signed their name, me and the old one signed their name. My grandpa couldn't read and write, and he made an X, and I put my name inside his. After we got that bill he paid for, I said, all right, fellas, you can come on now. We go down there and get our deeds back. Daddy said, what? I said, I signed your place up against that bill. <laughs> Blessed are the meek. Amen. God. Amen. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they're going to see God. Amen. You're just doing it for God and do it the way He wants it done, you'll be able to see God. For Praise God. God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I've been praying and asking God to let me find a place that I can find the Spirit, find a place where I can worship, and I believe God to give it to me. Praise the Lord. With all of my heart. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Glory to God. Our country's in a turmoil. Amen. They're Amen. fussing. They're fighting. They're having all these roundhouse conferences up there in Washington, going all the way to England. All the way, they're going all over the world trying to call them for peace. And when you see, and when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction is going to come. Amen. Amen. Blessed are they which are persecuted. Oh, I'm persecuted so bad I don't know what to do. Read the last of this verse now. Yep. A lot of times we get persecuted for our own, for our own, for our own sake. Amen. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Amen. Yeah. For righteousness sake. Righteousness sake. Amen. For we're persecuted. <coughs> Blessed are you when men shall revile you and persecute you. And shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Yep. Well, there was a job one time said, if you're a preacher, I'll run you around the airplane pilot. I said, huh? Say, they're here to tell them our uh, underground airplane. He said, well, that's what you are. I kept praying. I didn't pray it all back. I just kept praying. Amen. Mobile hole fell on him and crushed his legs. The first one he called for was me. Amen. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to die. Oh, I'm here to pray for me. You get up here to Mission Hospital and pray, so that I'm going to die. I said, go off to your room there in the hospital. And I said, son, you want to get on my airplane? <laughs> <laughs> well, hey, man, you want to ride on the airplane that you talked about, brother? It's going to take a flight one day after a while. We're going out of here. We're going, hey, man, I'm not looking to go a hole in the ground. I'm looking for a hole in the sky. Hey, right, man. Right. Well, go ahead. Now. Hey, man, that's right. Rejoice and be each is glad for reward is your great for great is your reward in heaven. How they persecuted prophets before you. Yep. The last message I ever heard my pastor preach, Grady Harris. I thought he was God in the flesh. That old man was about the size of Brother Ronnie about that. Lord was preaching. Amen. <laughs> He walked in a poor pit and gives these socks to his youth. Yeah. Old suits he had on just to hang it on him. But brother, when he got up and read this verse, he ought to saw the earth, but if he saw the Lord his Savior, we're with him to be sold. Glory to God, amen. It's henceforth good for nothing but to be cast out of the out and trodden on the foot of men. People used to be where they lived right. That's right, amen. Maybe we'll hush right there and then preach some more next time. I hope not. They say it's the six books of that. Amen. <laughs> took me 57 years and I ain't got it all done yet. Glory to God. He ain't going to get up. I'm going to tell you another little funny thing since you're done preaching. Hallelujah. Brother Arthur Fisher lived out on Redmond Road above Marshall. That river runs right down through Marshall. Man could, uh, he's a bad trip, he could throw his voice. And he had him with him done as being as 87 year old did. He said, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. He said, I'm going I'm to fool that old man, Arthur. <laughs> Arthur go down there to his barn and he'd pray and he'd carry him all over Marshall. Carry him everywhere down there praying till morning before daylight. Amen. And 
He said, I'll get to the porn stalls. He said, I'll hold my voice in that view. He said, what Arthur's going to do? He said, Arthur come down there and got his mule out and backed him in against the load of manure that he could load it up on his land to take out in his garden. The old mule looked back at him and said, I can't pull that. <laughs> Arthur scratched his head. Went back and hooked his trash can. The old mule looked back and said, I can't pull that. And now Arthur just got through praying to where he ever hear him up work. Yeah. He's now got a check line to pick them up. And then old mule looked back and said, I can't pull that. Arthur said, well, honey, you don't know whether you can or not. Said, you ain't even tried yet. <laughs> 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 Went right back to praying. <coughs> God knows this morning what we need to do is let's pray. Amen. God knows we need to pray. This is a weekend that we honor our flag. Amen. Glory is the fourth. Glory is the fourth that we honor. How many of us is going to honor the one to give us this right? Amen. I do. Tonight, tomorrow, all week, every day. I thought I was the meanest man that ever went in the United States Army. It didn't take me long to find out I wasn't the most mean at all. <laughs> There's mean people in there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm talking about bad mean. Yeah. I was a guerrilla warfare training in Fort Bend, Georgia. Old Sergeant come to me and he said, Now, if you go to Columbus, Georgia tonight, said, you get killed. said, You pay for it. said, Them guerrillas going to come out of them swamps down there in Alabama and said, They're going to take the Columbus over. And I said, Do they? <laughs> they look at you like, mm -hmm. I'll cut your throat if you don't get back. Amen. That wasn't peacemakers. No, that wasn't people who were trying to make peace. But through all of this, God's blessed us to be here today. Amen. He sure has. Thank God for this business meeting we've had today, election. And the day's gone by. Yep. Worked out just right. This time, God's going to take care of everybody. Amen. Keep the church together, keep the people together. Yeah. Everything will be all right. Yeah. Got the best music I've heard. Praise God. Somebody, not your wife, I believe this whole she's your thing. Yeah. All the rest of them can't do. Amen. Today. Just special things about special people that you don't forget. That man right back there just saved him a couple of times. That man can sure say. Yeah. Travis, you can say him, right? God's got a job for all of us to do. Never was. Before I go, I'm going to sing a song with my daddy, though. <coughs> and I got to sing at his funeral. I'm going to sing this song in memory of my daddy. My <coughs> preacher, you can't sing. Who told you that? I hear people say, I can't sing. Well, if God told you to, you can. Yep, amen. Make a joyful noise. <laughs> Listen to the words of this. That I got to preach in my daddy's funeral in 1990. <clears throat> when the storms of life oh, are raging, stand by me. When the storms of life are raging, stand by me. When the world is tossing me like a ship upon the sea, Thou who rulest wind and water, stand by me. Oh, my God. Amen. In the midst of tribulation, stand by me. In the midst of tribulation, stand by me. When the host of hell itself and my strength begins to fail, Thou who never lost. Lord God, amen. In the midst of false and failure, stand by me. In the midst of false and failure, stand by me. When I do the best I can, and my friends misunderstand, thou who never lost a battle, stand by me. In the midst of persecution, stand Lord by God, me. Amen. 
In the midst of persecution, stand by me. When my foes in battle rage, under taunt to stop my way. There say Paul and Silas, stand by me. Amen! This is my daddy's verse. I was born on his birthday. When I'm growing old and feeble, stand oh, by me. When I'm growing old and stand, stand, stand by me. me. When my life becomes a burden and I'm chilling through the years of Jordan, hallelujah of the battle, stand <laughs> by me. <coughs> my, daddy, my daddy battled cancer for three years. I sat beside his butt, I hold his hand. He said, son, I think that's home for me one more time. <laughs> hey, man. We might get saved that man. <laughs> thank God for the hope we got. Glory to God, amen. Let's pray. Father, I thank you for this day. God, that you've given me, that you've let me speak one more time. For your glory, for your honor, Lord, I pray this morning, Father, that you'll bless this church. Bless the pastor, God, for the abundance of the heart. God, I pray this morning, give us liberty, save our lost people, touch our people, Lord, we pray. Bless our country, let us get back to the ways that God wants us to be. And whatever you do, we we'll praise you and give you the honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Brother Trent, come on. So I'm getting better enough down my sticks out there in the car. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you see the devil anywhere, tell him I'm gone. <laughs> I've been having 30 minutes before I've asked for those well with you. I've enjoyed the day, folks. Thank you. Thank God for the day. <coughs> I enjoyed the preaching, the singing, the big the election, and it's I just like to be with God's people. Yes, sir, brother. Amen. Sitting in heavenly places. Amen. Good to see you. You might need anything. Sitting in heavenly places. You know, Jesus Christ. He made up the hedge. Yep. You might got a testimony. Thank God for Jesus. Thank Jesus. God for Jesus. It's the, it's the best thing that's ever happened to me. Uh, I thank the Lord for what He's done for me, for saving me. He's amen. always been there for me. <clears throat> amen. God is a good God. You can always count on Him. Amen. I like y'all to remember Shelly when we prayed. I witnessed to her. About two weeks ago now, and um, we talked a week after that, but now she's got me blocked. She won't let me text her. She won't let me call her. And I texted her mama and told her, I said, you know, I did what I'm supposed to do. Amen. Be a witness when you're living. You see somebody living in sin and shacked up and all that's not right. Amen. And I love her with all my heart. And I text her mama, and she said, I will tell her. And I said, thank you, and that was it. But hadn't heard from her. She keep praying, she keep, and keep praying. She just broke my heart. Keep praying, keep praying. But please pray for her, because her and her mama both <clears throat> need a lot of prayer. Amen. So just keep us all in your prayers. And me and my kids and my lost loved ones. Praise God. Just pray for us. I keep praying for us. You talk to her about the Lord, you probably pull the saw through the open wound. And it burned. And it burned. Yeah. And then she didn't like to burn. <clears throat> you know, you can't. I'm not sorry for what I did. Amen. You can't quench the burn of the Word of God. By shutting off your telephone, it's still in there. It's still going to burn. She'll still think about it. She'll be reminded of us.
remember what we're celebrating, folks, this 4th of July. In 1776, this country was declared an independent nation. That's when the Declaration of Independence was signed. Independent, you know what that means? We don't have to have anybody else take care of ourselves. Yeah. Yep. That's what that means. We don't depend on any other country. The United States is an independent nation. You know when the day of the Declaration of Independence was signed on your soul and mine? When you got saved. Yeah. I don't depend on no one but Christ. <laughs> Amen. Amen. That's the only one I depend on. I don't even depend on myself. This nation was formed by God, started by God, on Amen. the principles of the Bible. The, the, you know, <coughs> used to when the town had a decision to make, you know who they went and asked? The preacher. Yep. They went and asked the pastor of the church, one that was blessed by God and had the Spirit. They went and asked him how should what steps should we take? Now, they try to run them off and think they can do better. Yeah. That's all right. How many times have you been run off, preacher? Too many. Many times. <clears throat> I remember he was up preaching one time. He said, redeem. He was pre he was pastor redeemed that church. Way on up here in the hills. Mars Hill? Mars Hill, yeah. Mars Hill. They'd run him off. <coughs> Church would get down low, they call him back. Run him off, call him back. How many times has he passed up there? They ain't no <laughs> I told him, the Bible said that the church will set you free, and they set me free. <laughs> <laughs> we went up there singing one time. I, I'm going to forget it. It was hot. It was home time. <clears throat> went up there singing. They had a little outside shed, something on which we had. We ain't got nowhere to put one. It's too heavy around here. That you put it out here on the other side of the graveyard. And we went up there on a homecoming. Man, they got some good cooks up there. It was hot. We went to, we got, after that, we went to singing and stuff like that. Buzz always had a way with youngins. He was outside. We was outside eating. And he went over and sat down. There's 15 youngins just gathered around him. He didn't call them. They just went around and sat down and preached. He put her down to the they always do. I like, love, I love that. Had to wait for the others. We went inside and went to sing, and we didn't get out at about 4 o'clock. There was no need to have We had service all day. Good service. That's, that's the kind of good memories that I like to remember. They run him off and call him back. Run him off and call him back. I don't know who it was. A young lady up there. Prayed for her husband. I don't know. Years. She, her, she was saved and she came up and prayed for my husband. I remember her. Bud might remember her name. But one Sunday was was up there singing. And the, the spirit got to moving. I had a bell like that back there. She went back there and went to ringing that bell to praise the Lord. Ringing the bell and praise the Lord. Remember my husband. Her husband sitting over here in the woods somewhere. She said, he said, when I heard that bell ring, he, I know my wife was pulling the string. <laughs> A couple weeks later, he came in and got saved. Lord did. Amen. I remember things like that. Greg right? Carver did that. Who? Greg Carver. Greg Carver. His wife. Right or something down in front of the church. <laughs> yeah. I remember stuff like that. You know, I have good memories, folks. Anybody else? I think a lot of them memories like that, you know, and Amen. stuff we've seen. I heard a preacher preaching this week, and he was talking about, you know, if it wasn't for those memories, we wouldn't know how we're supposed to perform and act today. And, but, I, you know, I thank the Lord for those memories. I do, too. And the Lord works in mysterious ways. That place at Chesney that I was talking about is that thrift store that he mentioned. Is that where it was? Uh, yep. Where we had a that thrift store has got a program. It's a drug out program. And uh, I thought it was just in Chesney, but that like, in Mississippi seen it too. Praise God, amen. But, yep. That black boy knows what he's talking about. There he does. Praise God. Amen. Yeah. 
Praise God. Amen. You know, you can have a revival anywhere you go if you got God with you. That's it. Amen. If you take him with you, all, I, I don't much have to start a spark. If it becomes a raging inferno, hey, it's good. Uh, yeah. I went and I heard one time several years back when Gus goes sailing the picture and I went and, I, and he met me at the door and shook my hand and told me, Lord bless you and look around and get whatever I wanted to do. And next thing I know, he was over there talking to somebody else about the Lord. And Amen. I thought, you know, this is a good place to stop. <laughs> good place to hang out a while there, Travis. Uh, we loaded my van for, I believe it was $75. Uh, but, we, you know, we got to we got to be a witness and get the stuff we went out of here. Amen. And it was just a blessing just to stop and talk to him. Yes, sir. I got something that cost three dollars, and I said, "Can you give me three dollars?" He went and grabbed it in his bill. Go give me three dollars to pray for you. Praise the Lord. Get him there to get. Thank God. You know, I believe black people far the same color as theirs. <laughs> I do. They're both the same any, color. I don't believe there's much difference in the color of people's hearts. Oh man, there ain't no difference in the color of blood. No one thing. ain't no segregation in heaven. <laughs> nope. Ain't no Baptists. Ain't no Methodists. Ain't no Presbyterians. Ain't no Blacks. Ain't no Whites. Ain't no Chinese. There's no Americans. There's Christians. Nah, that's ain't it. Butterflies. Huh? Not big butterflies. <laughs> There's some beasts up there. I don't know about no butterflies. There's four beasts flying back and forth. There's horses. I ain't read nothing about no butterflies in our butcher. They might be. They might be. They might be frogs up there. I don't know. They might be. Well, they says we was all created in his likeness, so, you know, we're going to be whatever color Jesus was. And they ain't, like you said, they ain't going to be no different colors. We have service tonight, folks. We want to thank God and remember what we're celebrating. We like the 16th chapter of Romans. We'll be doing none of that book. Y'all be thinking about what book or subject you want to study next time. We don't have to study a book. Just pick out a subject. Life, death, resurrection. Revelation. Revelation. That's a book. <laughs> God of heaven, Father, I thank you for this wonderful day. Yes, Lord God. Thank you, Lord, for the spirit that moved in my soul today, Lord. One more time. As thy servant was up speaking and preaching and reading. Oh, Lord, the Beatitudes. Oh, Lord God, you show up good. Oh, Lord, I've I've had examples set before me, Lord, that I'll never forget. Jesus Christ, you were sent for an example that we should learn how to live, learn how to love, learn how to walk and talk, learn how to move and breathe, how to eat, how to sleep. Oh, Lord God, I thank you for this blessed day, this third day of July, 2022, the first Sunday in July. Lord, this is a good day for somebody to be declared free from the wages of sin and death. I hope and I pray, Lord, for the lost. I pray, Lord, for the ones who has turned us away, Lord, who has shut us off, 
Turn off the communication. Won't talk, won't speak. Lord, it don't make no difference if they turn us off. Oh, Lord Jesus Christ, you can go right in there in the midst of the bedroom and talk to them as they sleep upon the bed, Lord. Lord, they can't turn you off. Lord, you can go in there and speak to their hearts. In the deepest chambers of their hearts, oh, Lord God, we lift these up to you. We'll pray for the church as it's continued. Thank you, Lord, for the work that was done yesterday, the work that's done today. Lord, we thank you for the church. It's precious, Lord. I pray, oh, Lord God, I'll not do anything to disgrace thy bride. In the name of Jesus Christ, we love and pray and give you thanks. Amen. Amen. Amen.